Welcome back to the Bug Club Briefing, the podcast from the Bonbo Watch, where we bring real stories, expert insight, and life saving awareness to the world of bug clubs. In today's episode, we're tackling a subject that's close to home for so many pregnancy and blood clots. It's something that isn't talked about enough, and for those living with conditions like Factor V Leiden or APS, or who have experienced complications during pregnancy, it can feel overwhelming. Louise is joined by Dr. Aman Sharma to break it all down, from the risks and warning signs to the realities of medication, C-sections, dehydration, and that confusing D-dimer test. Whether you're pregnant, planning to be, or supporting someone who is, this one is essential. Let's get into it. Hi, everybody. Thrombo Watch again. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Aman Sharma. I'm Louise Thompson. If you listened to our first series, it opened with me talking about my challenges around pregnancy. And so we're going to go there again today, not least because one of our other guests has talked about how blood cuts first became something on her radar when she was pregnant. So it's, I wouldn't say it's a common thing, but it if blood clots are going to enter your life at pregnancy is a time when it's possible that that could happen. We know that I know, speaking as a non-medical person, I now know that when you're pregnant, your blood gets thicker so that you don't bleed out basically when you're in labor. But that, as with so many of these things that we talk about, that comes with its own set of complications. So it's a benefit in one way, but it's also a danger in another. We hear about that so often. So I'm going to turn to my good friend, Dr. Sharma. What do you make about pregnancy risks? Pregnancy is one of the most blessed things for people, but it does come up with few risk factors embedded with it. So, of course, people who've got the genetic predisposition, like people who have factor V laden, people who have got antiphospholipid syndromes. So these basically predispose them to have clots in the body along with the hyperviscosity, which you were earlier talking about. So when someone gets pregnant, there's a lot of changes happening in the body at the very same time. There's a lot of bombarding of different hormones. The placenta is being formed, which would further nurture the baby. And so lots and lots of hormonal influx and outflux of other chemicals is going on. And as you rightly said, because the mother has to provide for the blood of the baby as well. So the body blood becomes thick and thin at different stages in the pregnancy but yeah during the later stages they are more on the risk of getting it clogged because of the hyperviscosity of course pregnancy again risk is high but it's not like everyone will have no of course not yeah so again the to add upon the things is how complicated is the pregnancy, whether they are having gestational diabetes, whether they're having blood pressure increase in the pregnancy, if they're having stressful conditions in the family, whether they're single parent or there's a lot of financial stuff going on. And so, and so forth. You talk about a thing, you'll always have a risk or a stress factor associated with it. So along with the normal dynamics of your body, how are your surrounding dynamics working for you? That also plays a very big part. But again, people who have gone for C-sections are at higher risks. And compared to the ladies who had normal deliveries, the reason being, once you have a C-section, you get immobilized in your bed, you had a major surgery, and then the risk factors, of course, increase. Of course, another big factor here is your hydration status. Many women in their early phases of the pregnancy can have hyper -emesis. It's a condition where, you know, because of the hormonal changes, the women have a lot of vomiting and they can't keep food or fluid down so even my wife had a very challenging time with hyper -emesis and she was on IV fluids for both pregnancies second one was almost about three to four weeks I would say so we had to substitute IV fluids because she couldn't eat or drink and stuff and this basically predisposed in terms of having clots because you've got pregnancy your body's changing and you're definitely dehydrated so Hyperemesis is fairly common in a big amount of people. And of course, if the symptoms are very severe, they have to go to the hospital and get fluids and stuff. So the person that I think of who had that, that is quite well known, was Princess Kate, Kate okay. Middleton. She was hospitalized 
in at least a couple of her pregnancies, I think, with that. So fairly common. So it leads to dehydration, which increases the clot risk, as we already know. OK, yeah. you also mentioned phospholipid. Antiphospholipid Thank syndrome. Thank you. Yeah. Can you explain that? Oh, it's actually, again, a genetic disorder, you may say. It's quite complex to explain it in one episode. But in a nutshell, it increases one's risk of forming blood clots at a very higher risk. I would say if someone has got factor V and someone's got antiphospholipid syndrome, people with antiphospholipid syndrome are at much, much higher risk of developing clots, even having strokes. So we'll talk about that in the episodes to come. But just a little bit of clarity, it's genetic disorder? Yeah. Okay. So something that you're just born with, if you... If... As I said, it has got its own way of transmission, but to make it less complex, as I said, we'll talk about it in a fairly different episode. But I also talked about C-section, isn't it? So one of the most famous person who had a C-section and then had a pulmonary embolism, do you know about that? So we've talked about Serena Williams in the past. Exactly, she's the one. So Serena Williams, she had first pulmonary embolism. And it was later when she had a cesarean section and then was later rushed to the hospital again and was found to have pulmonary embolism. So people who had previous clots in their life, pregnancy again is an alarming factor for them. So these per people who had clot risk or are at a higher risk of clots, genetic predisposition, they would usually need a medication poked into their tummies. It is called enoxaparin. It's a form of anticoagulation medication which keeps your blood thin and it also helps in a way that because your blood is getting excessively thick, it keeps it under check. So the supply from the placenta to the baby, the fetus, is also going in a good way. Otherwise, you might have a placenta insufficiency and the fetus might not get enough blood and they later might have developmental disorders. Wow, it's a lot to worry about. So if you are planning a pregnancy or if you're pregnant, I know that those so Facebook groups and things of women who are in that situation very anxious. And there are many things to be anxious about. Can the drugs that you take harm the baby? If you don't take the drugs, are you at risk of your own life, yeah. potentially? If you're going to be taking these drugs and focusing on this, does it mean that you're not focused on your other children back at home? Yep. So many factors causing anxiety. And this is, I think, something that I've seen probably led to, to actually partly doing this, that anxiety that I see in young women who are just trying to do what we're told is the most natural thing in the world, right? To have yep. a family can actually be so challenging for them. So many things to worry about. So are the drugs all right if you're pregnant, the drugs? So they're in? quite a big group of medications which are not considered safe. It's really difficult to comment on at the moment. But yes, many of the antibiotics, many of the antiemetics, many of the painkillers and hence and so forth, they're usually contraindicated in the pregnancy or advise them to take with caution because again, they can easily cross, cross the placenta and they can go and affect the fetus as well. So that's the prime reason that we usually try to avoid it. There are a few medications which can be teratogenic, as in they can cause cancer in the fetus, in the baby. So we have wow. to be a, very vigilant. Few of them have fairly caused effects like having cleft palates and cleft lips. So again, I don't want to sound very negative here. Okay, Pregnancy, again, people who have it, they have both good and bad time. Yeah. But yeah, you have just to keep a check on the things that you're doing. Just follow the very basics. If you're having trouble, consult your obstetrician because having a medical input earlier is more beneficial. Again, if you are pregnant and you're having vomiting symptoms, again, consult the doctor because you might need some substitutes and stuff. And ultrasound is also very much needed to the progression of the pregnancy. But if you're having swelling in the legs or something, you may need ultrasound of your legs, which will show whether you've got clots or not. I remember you asking me previously, can someone have a clot earlier? And when they go to the hospital, can the clot go away? See, we have to understand that when the thrombus is formed, the clot is formed, it is fairly soft. Yeah, it's not hardened up straight away. So it's soft. 
yes at times it can dislodge it can go into the lungs and cause pulmonary embolism but if it's a very small clot if it disintegrates it can usually dislodge and doesn't cause any obvious harmful effects so one might have pulmonary sorry dvt but it can self resolve as well at times what we do is we do some blood tests i was going through the facebook groups and there were people talking about t dimer tests getting sure. done in the pregnancy guys d dimers would be up in pregnancy it's just not very specific for you to have a blood clot it is one of the markers which indicates whether you have a blood clot again pregnancy there's a lot of conflict going inside the body so you might say that it's also a sort of pro inflammatory state and your d dimers would be up cancers d dimers would be up sepsis severe infection d dimers would be up for the people who want to get the d dimers done and let's say if i get it done i don't have a clot i won't say you don't need to shell that much amount of money at all okay if you've got the symptoms yes go to the hospital you would be seen but getting a prophylactic sort of d dimer or using it as a screening test is not advisable at all it does not carry any better prognostic features or it does not change your overall outcome so again pregnancy try to be happy keep yourselves hydrated surround yourselves with good positive people and yeah if be, anything and be vigilant keep, absolutely keep absolutely and i wouldn't mind knowing a little bit more about d dimer what yeah. when you talk about a d dimer test what does that involve absolutely so you basically get your blood checked okay it can be a point of care or it can point of care means you've got a small machine and you can get it checked then and there okay the second more what to say reliable method is sending the blood to the labs and they would run it in the machines and say this is your d dimer the values can also differ in terms few people use a different measurement of it and few people use the other but regardless d dimer is a marker of someone having inflammation inflammation can be in the blood vessels it can be because of many other surrounding things so i'll give you a very simple example right now so i saw a patient i think last week when i was working so this patient had previous history of dvt okay they they are coming in with a very sort of sharp side of right side of chest pain which they woke up in the morning and having very much they said that they were having breathing difficulty along with it as well so now they were just stopped on the medication about 2 months ago right. anticoagulation there are lots of risk factors with this person isn't it because they they had clots we treated it they coming back again with a sort of chest pain and stuff i did the d dimer tests and the d dimer did come quite positive quite significantly positive i got the ct pulmonary angiogram done which is basically done to make sure you don't have blood clots for pregnant women or women who are in their early reproductive ages we use a ventilation perfusion scan vq scan the ctp is lot of radiation so we can't use it but the ctp was negative for this lady so someone who's coming in with a previous history of blood clot elevated d dimers yet no clots in the body so good yeah good for them but again it raises a suspicion for us clinically so people should not be getting i would say d dimers done at random places or through kits or anything it does not carry any prognostic value unless you have clinical symptoms and it's all clinically correlated otherwise you'll get one more thing in your head oh i've got my d dimers it's elevated i have a clot when you not have one I also saw a young lady I think about 3 weeks ago 24 weeks pregnant 6 weeks off pregnancy coming in with chest tightness and shortness of breath and some dizziness for 3 days D dimer marginally positive okay vq scan shows perfusion defect that they have a pulmonary embolism so they were started on the medication now so again it's not that one size fits all sort of thing here we've got people who have blood clots we've got people who don't have but mainstay is to be vigilant of the symptoms to be hydrated to be watchful for any things that are not looking what to say in your daily routine that you would have felt chest pains shortness of breath dizziness pain or swelling in the legs and if any of these symptoms are there please go to a doctor one of the things in addition that i hear a lot of anxiety about is when you've 
been on drugs to keep your blood thin whilst you're pregnant. And so you you get to the stage where the doctors are saying, okay, you can come off that now. But you're at the point where you've got young children, you've got a baby, you might have other children, and you're absolutely terrified that if you come off it, particularly I think for those who've clotted whilst pregnant for the first time, their fear about coming off those drugs and when they clot again is really significant. I guess you can't say if they come off them, they're not going to clot again. How do you work that out? Again, if they don't have any genetic predisposition, they having the blood clots is not, the blood clot medication is not recommended. Again, if someone has pregnancy and they've got a blood clot because of it, you've got a reason. So it's a provoked pulmonary embolism, provoked DVT. You have a fixed time of duration for which you need to be on the meds for. Unfortunately, yes, you're absolutely right. Few people go to have recurrent clots. So then you have to risk stratify if they would need life from anticoagulation. We have to make that decision. But I think the better people to get involved is the hematologist, the blood doctors, because if someone has got unprovoked DVT, they need to be seen by hematologist regardless. But if someone who had provoked DVT or PE, but they've come back with the reoccurrence, it's a complex state. So whether or not they need life term of anticoagulation is a decision that needs to be made. And that's why the specialists need to be involved in it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical, legal or financial advice. The views expressed are the personal opinions of the Trombo Watch team. If you think you may have developed a blood clot, please speak to your healthcare provider urgently. Health-related information shared in this podcast, including text, graphics, images, and other material, is intended for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or another qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. If you believe you're experiencing a medical emergency, call 999 in the UK for less urgent support 